with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for waking us up this morning, for your mercies upon us throughout the week, and as we go over our health portion this morning, pray that you may help us to understand more of your word, help us to understand these things that you, the gift that you have given on to us, the gift of water and the principles of health that you have blessed us with as well. Help us to learn more of them and to appreciate them more and to incorporate them more into our daily lives. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So last week, these past two weeks, we've been looking into, these past two weeks, we've been looking into water and we're going to be looking into, the, into this topic for some time because it's so, it's so vast and I've been learning so much about it that I can't wait to share all of it with you, but I can only do it in part. So let's continue with our second part. Last week, just a quick recap. Re, does anyone remember how much percentage of water that, um, that we, excuse me, how much, how much um, percentage of water that we lose where it will begin to affect our brain? Two, two. Oh, nice, 2%. So 2% two, two of reduced hydration in the brain results in short-term memory. What's an example of short-term memory loss? Where did I put my keys? Where is my phone? What did I eat yesterday? Or, you know, short-term memory loss, things that just happen that we usually, that we end up forgetting. And what about your bowels? Healthy stool is how much percentage of water and how much percentage of solids? 75 water and 25% solids. Amen. Nice. I'm glad we all remember. So now let's go into mixed signals. And we spoke about the signals for water in the body. And just a quick recap on the underlying portion. Water distribution is the only way of making sure that... Um, elements such as our hormones, chemical neurotransmitters, all of these things reach nutrients, oxygen, all of these things reach our vital organs. Humans seem to lose their thirst sensation and critical perception of needing water. Not recognizing a need for water, they gradually and increasingly become dehydrated as they age. And since water shortage and shortage in different areas of the body will manifest varying symptoms, signals and complications now labeled diseases can easily be resolved with water. But as the quote goes on to say, the simplicity of water is what deters many people. Because how could, such, how could something so, e so simple and, and flat as water be so beneficial? when there's so many drugs around, so many pills around to take. Amen. No, making wise is simple. That's the one I'm looking for. Yes. The law of the Lord is perfect. Making wise is simple. So because of, because of the law of God is not in their mind, is why they reject water. Amen. Amen. So with that thought in mind, let's go to next slide four, beginning in Exodus 4, 8. We looked into the signs where um, the Lord is speaking to Moses here and says, if they will not believe thee, nor hearken to the first sign, then show them a second sign. And if they will reject these two signs, the Lord says, take the water, which is in the river, and bring it... Um, Take the water that's in the river and that it shall become blood and onto the dry land. And we spoke about the, the correlation with this dry land representing the body and that the body gives its signs as well for us to follow. And the, the resolve for that, as the Lord says, is taking this water, which is, which is uh, taking this water, which should then become the blood and which will resolve the issues in the, uh, the dryness of the land, so the issues in the body, the dryness in the body. We should begin to realize that in the same way as we have a hunger pain signal, we also have a thirst pain signal in the body. And we spoke about how thirst eventually produces pain. And many pains that we experience, joint pains, muscle pains, headaches, track right back to our water, 
water intake or dehydration. So the bolded portion of, actually the whole paragraph says, the dry mouth is the last sign of dehydration. The body can suffer from dehydration when the mouth is fairly moist. And so that means that we can't always rely on just how it feels in your mouth because we become so accustomed to the standard. We become so accustomed to what we're used to. And so for some people, your mouth may be moist and yet you may still be dehydrated. Still worse, in the elderly, the mouth can be seen to be obviously dry. So dry, the lips are chapped. So dry, there's cracks on the, on the edges of the mouth. Yeah, the skin, uh, dry skin, wrinkly, um, scaly, yet thirst may not be acknowledged and be satisfied. So now into our section, feeling thirsty. And we spoke about, as a group, we were trying to figure out, well, how do you know when you're thirsty? And the best two answers that we came up with, um, Brother Swinon had an excellent answer, waking up. Because we often confuse the signals for hunger and, and, um, and thirst. So it is so hard to describe when you're thirsty. And we went around and spoke about, okay, well, what are the symptoms when you're thirsty? Um, is it dry mouth? Is it feeling um, this way or that way? But actually, those all go back to dehydration. So feeling thirsty, when you know you're thirsty, the easiest two things that we could come up with or to understand that is, one, when you're hungry. Sister Wise speaks about this. So often, because as we said, often the two are mixed. And also waking up. Just the fact that you woke up this morning already means you're thirsty before waiting for that signal to come. Because once that signal comes already, you're beginning to go into the stages of dehydration. So what are these stages? Skip down one slide into the three phases of dehydration. So mild dehydration is the first phase, second, moderate, and third, severe. So not drinking enough water, enough plain, oh, that's supposed to be plain water, <laughs> not plain water. <laughs> Not drinking enough water, that alone brings you into mild dehydration. <laughs> Losing too much water, especially in the summer heat, the heat wave we've been having, it's easy to go into mild dehydration. Dry mouth, dry lips, um, mild sore throat. So often a sore throat can begin with just being dehydrated. And feeling tired, feeling um, thirsty, these all stem right back to dehydration. Because the body, water keeps things moist. It keeps things pliable. It energizes us. What's the, when you think of a plant, um, and I've been seeing this a lot, um, a lot lately um, so with, with plants that we have at home, and I'm sure you're all used to it. So when you have a plant and it's hot outside, what does it do? Wilt. It wilts. And then it, it, what, what does physically, what does the plant do? Yes. It droops, yes, it droops. And so when we're tired, we become more droopy. We become more down. You go from being upright, energized, feeling good, to drooping just like the plant. And so we, we are as plants, and our bodies functions, function similarly. And once you, be, once you put that plant in a pot of water, or for it to drink the amount of water that it needs, because that's something we've been um, implementing more. So having a separate pot, fill that with regular water, and then put the plant in it. And then over time, the plant comes back into life. It, start, it, it no longer droops, but it starts to stand up. And so it's no longer tired. When we're tired, we droop, we slouch. So mild dehydration, similar to the brain, sets in when you've lost 1% to 2% of your body's water. That little takes you into mild dehydration. And that shows just how much our bodies are primarily water. So moderate dehydration, that's when you're continuing to lose water and not replenishing it. And this sets in in a couple hours. So you're peeing less, the urine is darker. And the more you're in this stage, the more your body begins to shut down. And so we go from tiredness to now it's no longer, oh, I'm kind of tired, I don't have that much energy, to now your, your body temperature is up. 
you're gaining a you're gaining a fever. Um, now it transfers from just not just tiredness to muscle pain, joint pain. You feel stiffer. It's harder to move because, as we said, water moisture makes things more pliable. So your heartbeat starts to suffer at that um, from moderate. Excuse me. From uh, moderate dehydration. So next, um, the heart starts to beat faster, difficulty fo um, focusing, nausea, and even vomiting. And this, this may sound weird that you're mildly dehydrated, but your body's trying to vomit. But this is actually due to a, the buildup of metabolic waste. And so our bodies are, it's like a, it's a machine. So you're giving off waste um, every time because th as we're breathing out, we're li letting go of waste. And so your body does this through your kidneys. And so when there's not enough water to flush and clean it out, waste will build up. And when waste continues to build up, it makes you feel nauseous, it makes you feel queasy. And your body's gonna try to take out that waste one way or another. So last phase of dehydration is severe dehydration. And this takes place over, it takes over 24 hours to enter this stage. Because we know how many days, how many days can you last without water? Yes, and so it can, so within a day, within a day or two, so taking over 24 hours, you can enter into severe dehydration when you're not taking, when you spend a couple of days without taking in any water. When you're going into three or more or two or more, then you see that last bullet points leads us right back to death. So what happens before that stage is that toxins, excuse me, the more dehydrated you are, the more your body begins to shut down. So um, in this final stage, your kidneys starts to malfunction. Your kidneys help to remove waste from your urine and blood. So when you're dehydrated, your kidneys try to hold on to as much water as possible. And so the body will start to, the body will start to stop you from urinating because it's in a shortage. And so what do you do in a storage? You're going to hold on to as much as possible. The same thing that happens with water is the same thing that happens with food. So many people go on crash diets and completely, you know, stop eating for long periods of time. The body is going to try to hold on to as much calories, as much energy as it can. And so with water, oftentimes when we have edema or swelling, people often associate that right back to salt or right back to, um, I don't know, I'm eating too much salt, but often it can be I'm, eat, I'm not drinking enough water. If there's, just a quick question, if there's too much water, that, that if the body's holding on to too much water, what's the number one thing that, can, that gets rid of water in the body? Hmm? The skin? Mm, no, what's the number one thing I can take in that gets rid of water in the body? If the body's holding on to too much water. It's possible when you're dehydrated. Your, body, your body's main goal is to survive. And so if the body's going into a dehydrated state, it's going to say, okay, I'm not going to let you pee anymore. Oh, that's true. Yes. And so what's the number one way to get rid of water? What, what's the number one thing we can do when the body's holding on to a lot of water to get rid of it? No. No. It's so, it's so simple. Just drink more water. Drink more water. Yes, Sashel. If your body is holding on to too much water, the number one thing you can do is to drink more water. Water is the number one diuretic. So when you go, into, when you go to the hospital, they give you a diuretic, which is a drug and things like that, that, that will have adverse effects in the body. But the best diuretic is actually water. We all know it. The more water you drink, the more you... Exactly. And so... So in severe dehydration, continuing on, so no urine, confusion, irritability, anxiety, your system starts to malfunction. It starts to then affect the brain even more. Lightheadedness, often fainting, and that fainting can lead to... Um, more severe uh, things such as cardiac arrest. And by then, 
call 911, call emergency services, whatever that number is in your area. And with, with appropriate treatment, dehydration should resolve, should resolve um, within two to three days. And God willing, it doesn't, it doesn't um, lead to death. So what are these wrong fluids? We all know them, stacked into um, six different categories, energy drinks, sports drinks, flavored waters, soda, teas, coffee, fruity drinks. The average American drinks about one to two glasses of water a day. That's it. Last week, how many glasses did we have as an, as an example, as standard? Yes, thank you. That's a good point. The average, the average is one to two. So some people don't even take in that much, as little as it seems. The general consensus, many people seem to think that water, it doesn't taste good. It's flavorless. So that's why we end up with things as flavored water, because people would rather drink flavored water than drinking regular water. But I mean, we all know here now that we all know that what actually gives water nice flavors is what? The salts in the water, the minerals. Distilled water tastes different than tap water. Um, flat water. Um, what is or soft water is a taste is a little different than hard water and so the minerals and we'll talk more on this next week really affect the water and really affect our bodies go ahead i have a question what about people who um who can't hold when they drink a lot of water they consistently go to the bathroom people who what who drink when they drink water they go to the bathroom a lot it's that that's when you should make, that's when um, it shows your body's not having enough salts or enough minerals, electrolytes, to hold the water. Okay, that's what I thought. The reason why I asked that question, somebody you know well, I was talking to her yesterday and I was just sharing some of the, um, the, some of the important things of water that you were talking about last week. Mm -hmm. And one of the things she said to me was that, because you know, she's in her 80s and she said that people have, people have been telling her that the reason why she is the way she is, the reason why she's sick, and she never got sick until she got to her 80s, mm -hmm. is that um, it's because of, of, I'm not drinking enough water because she only drinks water when she feels for it. Mm. And I said, you can't go by your feeling, you just got to drink. Because if you do that, you're never going to drink enough. Yep. So she's not drinking enough water. And what's happening as I'm listening to you, her memory is going. You know, she consistently forget things. She's cons she'll fall asleep on me in two seconds. Mm -hmm. Wake up, fall asleep, wake up, fall asleep, you know, and just dreaming away and like she forget that she's in the house, where she is. Yeah. So, um, you know, I, and she said, people have been telling her that. And I'm like, well, it seemed like it is. From what I'm seeing, it's something definitely with water because you're not drinking enough. And from what I'm hearing, you're saying just 2% less water causes short-term memory. And if you're an older person, it's probably even worse. Mm -hmm. So it's something that it's, I yeah. can probably talk to you about later. Maybe you could share yeah. more with her because since you have that information. Definitely, <laughs> you, definitely. You know, but. I've been watching this, and drinking water for Americans is still denied. That's really what they're saying. They just need to deny self. Self wants the sweet drink. Self wants the flavor. Self mm -hmm. wants. The Lord is just saying, deny self. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I would agree with Swindon. In a lot of cases, it's not really information. They just don't want to do the right thing. Right? Yep. That's what yeah. the Lord is teaching at the end of the world. If mm -hmm. We're rich with information. We just don't want to do what the information says. That's really the problem that we're dealing with. Yeah. So moving on for, to water distribution. So I found this really nice image that shows the distribution of water throughout the entire digestive system. From the salivary glands, which last week we saw takes two, needs about two liters of water just to, just to keep you having, an, just to keep your mouth moist, keep you having enough saliva in your mouth to help with digestion. We know digestion begins in the mouth. So two, two liters of water goes to the salivary glands. Um, going down into the esophagus, we need another 1.5 liters. The stomach uses 2.5 liters um, for digestion. Your, so your stomach acid needs, your stomach acid is comprised mainly of water. Um, your cells in your stomach need that water, the mucus, to hold the barrier of the stomach, um, hold the barrier and the integrity of the stomach so that our stomach acid doesn't end up burning through our stomach. Um, so the small intestines, sorry, going into the liver, it needs another 0.5 liters. 
um, which is used also by the gallbladder. The pancreas, another 1.5. The small intestines needs a lot. We see that increase of water, that it increases to 6.5. And to the colon, uh, oh, excuse me, the small intestines, not increases, it's a negative. The small, inte the small intestines is, um, takes up about 6.5 liters, and in the colon it takes away about 1.3. And then as we, as we pass, um, pass our stools, another 0 0.2. So into water, sto water shortage. It says now a few words, a few words about the value of water. People will tell you, you should feel thirsty before drinking, as you said, Michelle, but this is not an infallible rule. The daily normal use of water is two quarts for the kidneys almost the same for the skin. The lungs have to throw off about the same amount of moisture. So that's a negative of, that we're losing. The liver has to use up that much in manufacturing bile and the alimentary tract still uses more. So the digestive tract still uses more. Even granting that the lungs take much more moisture from the air, it still leaves a large quantity that should be taken in by drinking. By the body, but the body can only use that which it has, and often there is not enough water taken into the body to supply more than a fourth of its needs. Yes, man. You know, that explains why a lot of people don't die from lack of water. They just get it by breathing. It says here the lungs take in water. Because they breathe, they get water. And that's, mm -hmm. why, that's why a lot of people just don't die. If they're, if they're still eating, and, but it can still lead to death and severe dehydration. So that's why I'm no, a little waver on what you're saying. For, for, for what oh, you read yes, earlier, yes. one to two, one, to the 2%. average people in America drink one to two cups oh. of water, right? Mm -hmm. That means, like Sanirin says, the majority of them drink half cup of water or no water at all. In fact, all they drink is soft drink and, and whatever, which means the only water they get is from breathing. Or from taking a shower, yeah. you get water mm -hmm. there too. Yeah, um, fruits. Or from food. taking a shower, but 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 outside of that, they don't really get water. So what I'm saying is, the body is that strong because some of these people will live to 60, they will live to live to 80, mm -hmm. living that kind of life, and the yes. body is the body is strong along with the mercy of God because of, obviously, it's also God giving them space to to fix themselves, but. The body is a powerful It's unit. very resilient. Yeah. And some of these issues we begin to see in chronic thirst, if you scroll back up to slide five, under feeling thirsty, ulcers, colitis, hiatal hernias, constipation, low back pain, chest pain, depression, high cholesterol, high blood pressure, asthma, diabetes, obesity, even allergies, all connect back to chronic thirst. When the body has been so deprived of water for so long, these are the symptoms that come up that are all marked as disease that must be treated by some drug. So back to um, the slide 11 and chapter 12. I'm going to go quickly here for time. The, we only have two slides left. So this whole chapter or this first page was just so nice. I just took a whole picture of it. So you can easily find it in the book if anyone wants to read it. And this is the book, Your Body's Many Cries for Water. It says the simplest, the simplest um, treatments in medicine, treat the simplest of treatments in medicine, and just the highlighted portion, which is all. Your body needs an absolute minimum of six to eight ounces, ounce glass of water per day. Alcohol, coffee, tea, caffeine, all of these don't count as water. The best times to drink water, clinically observed in peptic ulcer diseases, are one glass one half hour before taking food, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So basically taking a glass of water before your meal times. Um, I put this in because we talked about last week, well, when are the best times in the day? And so this, this gives an example or a rule that some can follow if you choose. And so drinking before your meal times, at least half an hour before taking food, and a similar amount two and a half hours after each, each meal. I know that was a point of topic we brought up and how we said the longer you can wait after eating, the better. And so two and a half hours is not, not bad. 
and not saying you have to follow the, this exactly, but um, it can be a good guide. So this is, this is the very minimum amount of water your body needs. For the sake of not shortchanging your body, two more glasses of water should be taking, taken around the heaviest meal or before going to bed. It's not, some can't do this because you wake up having to pee a lot. So as we said last week, the best times to drink water is during the day. So the most, most of your water should be drinking during the daytime and before your meal times. Thirst should be satisfied at all times. With increase in water intake, the thirst mechanisms becomes more efficient. Your body might then ask you to drink more than the above minimum. That above minimum being six to eight ounces. So depending on your body, you may need more you may need less, but six to eight is the standard. And so I want you to catch the, that sentence, to pay attention to that sentence where it says, with increase in water, the mechanism becomes more efficient. efficient. What is that mechanism? It's our thirst signal. And that's something we've all lost and have met some more than others, but that signal has died down over time where we don't know when we're thirsty. So the more we drink, the more we'll know when we're thirsty, the more that signal will be, will be made stronger. So it's just as it is with Christ. The closer we draw to Christ, the more we'll know when his presence is near us. Adjusting water intake to mealtimes prevents the blood from becoming concentrated as a result of food intake. When the blood becomes concentrated, it draws water from the cells around it. We saw this example with our stool. So the body is going to say, okay, well, I need some water. You're not drinking water. I'm going to rob the saliva of some because I need some. The saliva has two liters. We need some for digestion because you just ate an hour ago or you, your, your meal time's about to come up. I know you eat around this time, so I'm going to rob your mouth of it. So dry mouth because the body needs it elsewhere. Water is the cheapest form of medicine to a dehydrated body. As simply as dehydration will in time produce the major diseases we are confronting now, a well-regulated and constantly alert attention to daily water intake will help to prevent the emergence of most of the major disease that we have in our society to get today. And lastly, water is a gift. And John chapter four, verse 10, and Jesus said, if thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is that saith to thee, give me to drink, thou wouldest have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. And we know this story, won't go into it, but, but this, yeah, we won't go into it. So pagan, pagans understand this gift of water. They have a whole dance for it, a whole celebration for it. They appreciate this gift. We who serve a living God often devalue it, even despise it. Water tastes bad. We don't want it. Let's put some flavor on it. Let's, let, let's, um, let's change it for something else. Acts of the Apostle says, why do we not hunger and thirst for the Spirit of God? Why do we not talk of it? Because as it is with the natural, so it is with the spiritual. Why do we not thirst for the Spirit of God? And preach concerning it. The Lord is more willing to give the Holy Spirit to those who serve him than parents are to give good gifts to their children. And thirsty. I love the definition of this word because one, we know the first definition, it means feeling a need to drink something. But the second definition of being thirsty is what? Having a truly strong desire for something. Yeah, for that strong desire. And our strong desire it should be for, for the living water. It should be for Christ. And so often we don't know the, the signals for our thirst. And we don't know, so we don't know when we need something. Because God, calls, God is the living water. He's the water that is supposed to cleanse the earth, cleanse our bodies of its defilement. And so not recognizing when we're thirsty is not recognizing our need for Christ in a spiritual sense. And lastly, nothing that pertains to physical perfection should be looked upon as of little importance. In eating, drinking, and dressing, the laws of health should be diligently followed. Michelle? I just wanted to add one thing I've noticed that the simpler your diet, the easier it is to enjoy water. As mm. plain 
you know, when, as far as like, just, just drinking distilled water or spring water, you don't need any flavor. I've never liked flavor water, but I know sometimes people do want flavor, you mm -hmm. know, and they add like lemon, which is good, it cleanses you, you know, or like, mm -hmm. you know, just many different things in it. But I, I've noticed a difference from just, just simply eat, your taste buds changes and also water. You actually enjoy the taste of that water. Mm -hmm. Another thing I've noticed, I think Rasha mentioned it last week, is that seasons changes, um, talking about, I think you mentioned about sweetness. When you eat sweet, yeah. it <coughs> makes a difference. In the summertime, you should have less sweet. And the reason why I mentioned mm -hmm. that, water. Um, when you mentioned, um, last week I did mention uh, that the fans had said that um, eating, your, eating, after you eat your meal, the longer you wait, the better it is. Mm -hmm. When you eat a lot of sweet after you eat your meal, you tend, especially in the heat, mm -hmm. your body tends to want more water. It has happened to me this week. <laughs> That's why I said that. And I realized I didn't want to drink a lot of water after I ate. But um, because of what I ate. Increases the need. Because of what I, I had this, 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 this. I had something that was sweet, and I usually don't, and I did. And once I did, because it was sweet, I tend to want more water because it was so hot. Mm -hmm. And so what happened is, you end up, I ended up I'm having to feel extra, fu extra full with just water, and I, you know, and I already had the food in my stomach, and so it's a very uncomfortable situation. So we have to be very careful when we, what we eat after our meals, you know, mm -hmm. because I even our meals, too, how salty it is, it would actually make you drink, actually crave water half an hour later, you know, and so, you know, mm -hmm. it could mess you up. Amen. And what, um, oh. I just want to add to what you were saying. And we, we know, we all know that God's word is, is true. It's 100% true. Amen. So the, the natural and the spiritual, they both teach the, the very same things. For this, this is the reason why, um, this, this is the reason why you you get all these diseases are tied to a lack of water, because we know that the 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 um the Bible is is the word of God and that is the true living waters and it gives life and it gives cleansing, and Revelation twenty two says that if you add unto this word, he would add the plagues onto you. So adding all these things to water and trying to change the taste of the water and all these and putting all different substances in the water is why sicknesses are coming upon people because if you add to the water with a water of life which is god's word the lord adds on to these plagues but naturally the same thing um occurs you add to you add things that don't need to be in the water and you add tannins and caffeine and so much sugars and colors and dyes and all these things to the water now you're adding plagues you're adding these sicknesses unto you as well so the the natural and the spiritual they always go hand in hand they show the very same things that that if you add to God's word, he adds the plagues. You add to, to the water, he, you also add these diseases. You add the plagues. Amen. I, I definitely agree with you. Um, I do think there, there, there's a way to, just as there's a wrong way, as the world does it, there's a right way as well, where we can add to the water in a right way by electrolytes, by salts, and things like that to where it becomes even more beneficial for the body and so yeah, we'll go into yeah so the more natural things we add to to more natural things is what we can add to water that can help it to be better lemons herbs um not herbs added to water to make tea and things like that so we'll go into that next week um and let us pray for, to close today dear heavenly father we thank you lord for your mercies upon us we thank you for life and health, and we thank you for the gift of water. We ask that you may please help us to value this gift more, that we take it in as we, seek, as we would like to take in your spirit, as we want your spirit within us to dwell in us, to transform us. Lord, I pray that we may have the right water, the living water, to transform, our, to transform us from a sinner to, to a saint, to transform us from the, the old man and to a new creature. Forgive us, Lord, of our sins, and please be with the following speakers. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.